So I made this video to raise awareness for Black Lives in Malta. Um, I went around speaking to people to gain a perspective from those who have much more insight than us white privileged young persons at home um, and what you're gonna see is basically the aftermath of um, me speaking to these people. I decided not to film these people who I met because I wanted it to be more of like a conversation rather than me interviewing them. So the first person I met was Maskut. He's 22 years old from Somalia. Um, we instantly became friends me and him because he's 22 and he, he didn't look it. He looked, he looked like a proper adult, um, a fit person, a really, really handsome person as well. One of the fucking hottest persons I've seen, honestly. Perfect beard, man. He looked really cool. Um, his fashion sense was on point as well in summer. So basically, he's been living in Malta for eight years. Masu told me that he loves living in Malta, that people treat him with respect. Um, he, he's lived in Sweden before, he's lived in Austria, he has a wife in Austria, in fact. Um, so he's been all around Europe, in Finland as well, and he said Malta is one of the best, one of the most friendly, friendliest people that he's ever met. He has friends who are Maltese, he loved the conversation we were having, he wanted to be my friend instantly, he was really happy that I, I went to talk to him. He could do push-ups like, like this, you know, ones which like you feel your triceps. Um, he could do 20 of these, so I'm like, oh, no, no, you can't do 20, and then he fucking got up. And he started doing them, and he showed me how he can do 20 of these. And I was impressed. I was man. That is amazing. Um, and he's just an overall great guy. In fact, he's not working at the moment because of coronavirus, and he wanted to go to his wife in Austria in March, but because of the corona, he's obviously not there. So we spent around literally 30 minutes talking. He was telling me stories or what when he goes out and what he does and and his view on life and things like that. He said, bro, go go to this place in Hamrun, that's where you'll find all people who I who I know. They work at a few shops in Hamrun. And he said he literally showed me on Google Maps a specific location. And he told me to go there to, to speak to his friends over there. <laughs> and I'm like, alright, I'll go I'll go there next. And on my way to Hamrun I go. So I came to Hamrun after Pachville and straight away I saw a few people, two people, buying a kebab and they were speaking to the kebab shop owner. So I said, ah, okay, they'll be willing to talk to me probably. So I go to them and I start asking them questions. And they're like, it can be Malti, Tash, it can be Malti. I'm like, all right, like, so I start to ask him questions in Maltese and so He's 39 years old, he's been living in Malta for 15 years and he's had a great experience in Malta and he finds the people very welcoming and very fair and and we carry on talking and straight out he's like bro you want a kebab? <laughs> I'm like I'd like a kebab, man dish flu, stas be. And he's like bro, bro fool, he's like, he's like on me, on me and we go and he buys me a fucking kebab. <laughs> A, a big one, Ty. He buys me a 4 euro worth kebab for talking to him for for maybe two minutes. Because then we bought, I bought it, and we continue talking until for about ten minutes. And he goes, he says, oh, "I have to go. I have more work." That's all. Eh? Ciao, ciao. Can <laughs> now I have a fucking kebab? <laughs> I really, really appreciate the kebab he got me. I am forever in his debt. He had no reason to even offer me a kebab. Like, I don't know, I, I was just this random person who came after him. Crazy. Uh, maybe I, that's the white privilege which you get, you know. Madonna. Um, and so much. And he gave me his Facebook, like, like Mahmoud did also. Mahmoud. Maskut. So now I have Maskut's Facebook and Abdullah's Facebook. And he told me to go to Halfar, but instead I just started to walk around Hamrun to see if I 
could talk to anyone else. So while walking, then I met Alex. He came to Malta very recently compared to the other two. He came to Malta nine months ago. He's from Cameroon. He explained how his family were killed. He explained how we only have one life and we have to live to the fullest. These are in his words. He obviously he couldn't speak English very, very well. But he, was ex he explained how we're here for one time and we have to enjoy it and we have to have fun. And it's important to use your life to, to learn things and to enjoy it. He was basically telling me. He was telling me how yeah, he, the only young people he saw were in St. Julian's in Potterville. And how he really liked to see so many young people having fun and um, dancing and having a good time. He just really liked to see that. But he is aware of the problems we have regarding immigrants, um, like every other European country does. And he was asking questions on my perspective as well, and we had a good conversation a bit more politically. Alex is 25 years old. He explained how I was the only like Maltese person to speak to him, that he's, he rarely speaks to anyone Maltese. And he really enjoyed the conversation we had. And he doesn't know yet about his future, but right now he has to settle in Malta because he can't go back to Cameroon because he says they'll fucking kill him. So, so overall, what I gained from their perspective is that... Oh! I'm filming something. What? <laughs> I like can't talk, man. <laughs> That's Gavin in our privileged house. I'll wait for him to go back in and stop listening to what I'm saying because I feel embarrassed to talk when there's someone watching me from a window <laughs> overall they they all want a good peaceful life with friends with family and they understand what life is what life has to offer them how they could live in a safe environment with good people people they trust and Overall, in Malta, that's what they have, and that's what they are right now, where they decide to stay. Um, they're all really, really kind people. In conclusion, we should all just fucking be kind to one another. We're all people, we're all babies. We all relied on our... We all relied on people to take care of us when we were younger. We're all fucking crying, vomiting, shitting. We also need to like appreciate that we're very very comfortable compared to billions of other people in this world. Malta is nothing compared to the whole world. We're a very very small minority of the real world. We're very privileged in regards to anything. So come with regards to our family, shelter, food. We have an easy life. Um, Black lives do matter, they're fucking smarter, stronger and braver than we all could fucking imagine us to be. Oof. I'm gonna put a link somewhere, I, I don't know where man, I don't even know where I'm gonna put what I'm gonna do with this video. But to be honest, the, you, what you can also do is just fucking, don't be a dumbass man, just treat people like, like the way you want to be treated. It's so cliche, but it's so true. Everyone wants to just have a fucking laugh, man. We're all gonna die, man. We're all gonna die. We're all the same people, man. Allah has to see someone different because of their skin color. Man, you, you, you honestly have to be the stupidest person to treat someone else differently because of their fucking skin color. They... <laughs> How fucking idiotic could you be, Marash? So that's the video. I hope you gained an insight regarding black lives in Malta and how they matter. Um, 
I hope it was more informative than seeing a picture which is black with the caption Blackout Tuesdays on Instagram. Um, and to end the video I'm gonna post I'm gonna read out some captions, some quotes that I find on Google Images to make the video a bit more dramatic and a bit more sad so people feel more emotion in watching this video and maybe share it because they feel sad in the end. So I'll search some racism quotes. Cue the sad music. So I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We've all heard that quote before and it's very true. Um, we all, and, and we're all born not racist, we're all born not it's just how you're brought up, you know, and where you've been brought up. Second one. The fact that we have to debate whether or not racism still exists is proof that it still does. That's true, I mean, I agree with that. It is not enough to be quietly non-racist. Now is the time to be vocally anti-racist. I agree with that. It's probably the reason for all the awareness that is going on at the moment. That it's... I mean, there have been movements before, but... I've never seen it on this scale before. Um, and specifically, it needs to be done in Malta. Um, like, fuck George Floyd, I know it's horrible and happened in America, but let's try to speak specific, be specific to Malta um, and acknowledge that this shit happens every day and it's been happening for a long time in Malta. Um, so let's try to raise awareness in Malta, not in America, although. In America, it's important to. This one should be good. This one, I see Gandhi in the picture. I remain an optimist. Not that there is any evidence that I can give that right is going to prosper, but because of my unflinching faith that right must prosper in the end. Well said, well said, Gandhi. All of this means that subordination doesn't require intent. In fact, Apathy often works just as well. To be honest, I don't even know what that means, so we'll just skip that. Um, when people say black lives matter, that doesn't mean blue lives don't matter. Manifest, I don't know what the fuck. I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. Alright, now we're going off point now. Let me go, let me search something else. Let me search. Um, racism quotes said. <laughs> White people now tend to get darker, and black people wear their hair like white people. We are all confused. Deep down, we admire each other, but why can't we accept it? This is, this is, uh, this, I agree with this because, um, we all want to portray a nice image, you know, for others to see. Um, for example, I, I like to portray an athletic image, and I want to be, have a, be athletic, and I want to be fast, and black people have a tendency, because of their fast twitch fibers, they can run faster and they're more powerful. Um, and I want to be like them, you know, black. Um, on the other hand, black people, uh, they want maybe a uh, white... What do they want? A someone white? As I know. Now what do they... Whoa. Hmm. I don't know. I can't think of something a white person has better than a black person. Uh. Their hair. What? Why would a black person want white person's hair? Apparently, a black person wants a, wants hair like white person. I don't agree with that. 